from this to this. Reader's Digest could be on iPhone soon. This is part of the 87-year-old magazine's plans to serve the new media wave. And how will the publication aim to stay afloat on the now well-charted waters? More companies are now going online,、mm. and there's talk of the print industry being a dying industry. What is、yes. your take on it?、Um, well, what I always say is that the stories about print dying are almost always in print. So uh, uh, just as television didn't kill radio, and the internet has not killed newspapers,、um, I believe that there's really a, a,、um, a future for us as as content creators. I think that the most successful companies, the most successful content companies, however, will make sure that. They do a good magazine, and then they do ten other really good products. You have to do that now because our attention span is fractured among all these different devices. And I'm as much of a of a tech geek as anybody else. I've got my BlackBerry and my iPhone and my Kindle and my magazines that I travel and my novels that I travel with. So、um, I think increasingly we take all of that.、Uh, we have to take all of that for granted. Um, and package our information for、um, what the best experience for the reader is going to be. Do you think there's a difference between magazines and newspapers? I do.、Um, I do think there's a difference.、Um, magazines are a different experience.、Um, they're more of an aspirational experience. You carry a magazine around with you, and it tells people a little bit about who you are. News is much more of a commodity, and so the news business, I believe, is much more challenged than the magazine industry because we can do in-depth stories that are that play off the news、um, or that tell a human story behind the news, but that are not, you know, breaking news. It's got to be on at six o'clock, or you've lost your moment. So,、um, so yeah, I think newspapers have a have a bit of a of a rougher road right now.、Um, I was at the World Media Summit in Beijing, and that's what everybody was talking about. And those were mostly folks from news agencies and broadcast outlets, and they are talking about and concerned about the merging of news media.、Um, that the cycle has become very, very short. But I think it's a different proposition for for magazines. Is Reader's Digest planning to move towards the online platform? Uh, we already have launched a global website platform、uh, in four countries, including China, in middle of September.、Um, we have plans to roll out 40, and that will 40、uh, in 40 countries. That will allow us to, for the first time, have content-rich、um, websites where we can publish almost simultaneously、um, and pull in content not just from our magazines, but also from books that we publish around the world. So, readersdigest.com in the United States is already a very strong online brand,、um, and we have the same expectation for our global、uh, websites. As we will be doing not just content, but e-commerce and、uh, and marketing efforts as we transition a lot of our consumer marketing to、um, to e-marketing. Do you think that moving online will affect、uh, subscription and readership in the original print form? My experience in、um, all my years of working in the magazine business, and also seeing what my competitors are doing in the United States, is, act- is exactly the opposite. Is if, if you can be strong online,、um, people, if they like you online, they also want you in this other platform. So、um, I think it can only help us to to be online and to and to be a really strong player there. But Reader's Digest has filed for bankruptcy. So、mm-hmm. now, moving forward, where do you, how do you plan to go from here?、Um, well,、uh, a lot of people don't really understand what bankruptcy means, and, and the U.S. courts、um, allow us the opportunity to do something called a pre-arranged bankruptcy filing, which means that we have gone to our、uh, lenders, and 80% of them have agreed with the restructuring plan. But it's really a financial restructuring. It doesn't affect operations, and I think that's a real difference. It's a、um, it's a business difference in different business markets.、Uh, U.S. companies have this tool at their disposal, which、uh, is allows us to、uh, get rid of a big burden of financial debt and free up 
money that would normally be going to pay debt service to pour back into our operations. But um, for those of us who are working on the brands and working in the magazines, um, it's really business as usual. We are, um, we are not going out of business. Uh, we intend to be around for a really long time. Um, and it is really a financial restructuring event that only affects our U.S. financial operations. What is the future of Reader's Digest? What can we look forward to? Um, well, I think that as a truly global magazine, we have more ways that we can uh, cooperate with one another. And as the new global editor-in-chief is also responsible for the U.S. magazine, I'm looking forward to the things, the schemes that we can cook up uh, together around the world. So you will see more of that. Um, uh, continue, continually, we'll be looking for ways to um, package our content in interesting ways and tell those kinds of stories that only we can tell. Um, but I'm very excited about the future, and I think that um, you know, in in months' time, not even in years' time, but in months' time, we will have our magazines downloadable on the iPhone, and we're already on Kindle in the U.S. I am making an assumption, but I'm, I know that everybody's enthusiastic about it, that as soon as the Kindle is released in Asia, we'll, you'll be able to get a subscription to uh, RD Asia on, on Kindle. So um, we will be very aggressively pursuing those new channels for our content. The magazine will not be neglecting other ways of hooking readers while riding the digital wave. Car giveaways, cash draws and more freebies. These seem to be the stable for Reader's Digest magazines. But are they real or just marketing gimmicks? Peggy answers the question in the next clip.